O oh, sorrowing brother, everybody have given up on you. You are left alone to dry up, cursed, and you feel your life is in vain. And I've come to tell you, amazing grace stretches his hand out to you. You just need to hold his hand. Mark chapter 8 verses 22 to 26. And they came to Bethsaida and some people brought to him a blind man and begged him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. And when he spit on his eyes and laid his hand on him, he asked him, Do you see anything? He looked up and said, I see people, but they look like trees walking. Then Jesus laid his hands on his eyes again and he opened his eyes and his sight was restored. Beyond the hurdles of life, we see hurdles are barriers which are meant to prevent progress. In Olympics, there is a hurdle race when a participant has to cross over several hurdles in order to win the prize. Even in life, we have several hurdles that are placed before us. For example, sicknesses, schools, colleges, examinations, and even the natural laws of gravitation, where you cannot go up as you like. Some are set by governments and people based on caste, color, creed, religion. And some are set up by ourselves with habits, relationship, wrong choices and many mistakes. But whatever hurdle that you are facing in your life, I have come to tell you, there is a person who can take you beyond every hurdle of life and his name is Jesus. Listen carefully, my friends. Walls could not block him. Water could not sink him. Fire could not consume him. Sickness could not grip him. Sin could not stain him. Death could not stop him. The grave could not hold him because he is God from heaven. And if he is in your life, whatever hurdle is there, he will help you to go beyond every hurdle of your life. In Mark chapter 8, verse 22, we read about a blind man who was in Bethsaida. Bethsaida was the hurdle. It was a place of unbelief and a place which was cursed by Jesus because of their unbelief. Though many miracles were done there, still they did not believe. And whenever Jesus cursed, it dried up. You remember the fig tree? And I believe Bethsaida was a dried up place. A place so withered, hopeless, unwanted by all. But though Bethsaida was cursed, though Bethsaida was uh, so dried up, uh, though Bethsaida was an unbelieving place, there was one person who stepped into Bethsaida in order to save one blind man and his name is Jesus. And that is what I call amazing grace. Someone said, when you are in darkness, even your shadow will leave you. But I tell you, that is exactly when Jesus will step into your life uh, and he will make your shadow come back to you. That's amazing grace. Maybe you're living in darkness. Maybe you're living in fear. Maybe you're living in curses. Maybe you're living in habits. I want to tell you, there is one person who can step into your mess and turn your life around. His name is Jesus. Today, amazing grace has come into your life. What you need to do is just hold his hands.
Bethsaida, a place so cursed. Bethsaida, a place so forsaken. Bethsaida, a lonely and dried up place, abandoned by all. But Jesus, he steps into Bethsaida to save one wretched blind man. Amen. Oh, sorrowing brother, everybody have given up on you. You are left alone to dry up, cursed, and you feel your life is in vain. And I've come to tell you, amazing grace stretches his hand out to you. You just need to hold his hand. Secondly, verse number 23, Jesus took the blind man by the hand and led him outside Bethsaida. I told you, Bethsaida was a place of unbelief. Bethsaida was a cursed place. Bethsaida was a dry place, a rejected place. But Jesus came into Bethsaida with one purpose. And you know what was the purpose? The purpose was to take this man outside of Bethsaida. The hurdle was Bethsaida. It was grace that brought Jesus to Bethsaida. It was grace that Jesus held the hand of this blind man. It was grace that said, I will come with you outside Bethsaida. You need not go alone. But this man had to go with Jesus. Leaving behind his pleasures, his people, his comforts, the curses of Bethsaida, the habits and the lifestyle. He had to leave and go beyond Bethsaida in order to receive the miracle. The purpose of grace stepping into your life is to take you beyond your mess, beyond every hurdle. But people are not willing to leave their old ways, their habits, their secret sins, and they sit in their bedside and say, Oh, grace of God is enough for us. These are the people who sit in sin and expect Jesus to come and save them. I tell you, Jesus coming into your bedside uh, is grace. Uh, Jesus uh, holding your hands is grace. Uh, Jesus uh, telling you I'll come with you is grace. Uh, but uh, you need to rise up uh, and go outside your bedside. Uh. Unless you come out of bedside, uh, Jesus says there cannot be a miracle. I, why I tell you this is the holy God has come and held our unholy hands. All he wants us to do is come with him outside our habits, outside our pleasures, outside our sinful life, beyond our hurdles of life. And only then we can progress in our life. Decision number two we need to take is, Lord, I will hold your hands and I will come with you beyond my bedside. Thirdly, in Mark chapter 8 verse 23, after this Jesus put spit in his eyes. Spit is a sign of insult. Spit is a sign of hurt. Spit is a sign of shame. This man is asking a question, Lord, I'm holding your hands. I'm walking with you. But why are you putting spit in my eyes? Many children of God have the same question. They say, before coming to Jesus, I had no problem. But now my life seems to be worse. I want you to remember this clearly. When Jesus holds your hand, a little pain, a little shame is sure to become a gain. A little pain, a little shame will turn out to be a gain. Amen. Listen, my dear friends, a designer works on a cloth and he pokes an ordinary cloth and he pokes. See carefully, he pokes and pokes and he pokes and he pokes. And the cloth is asking, why so much of pain? 
poking is painful why the pain and after all the poking when we see the cloth looks even worse because everything looks messed up the designer says wait wait i have not finished not yet finished and he keeps poking what you see is this when he has finished he will show you what he has been doing see that today if you are a child of god and you're going through trying situation you're holding the hands of jesus but you're feeling the pain it feels like he's poking and you feel all are laughing at you your life seems messed up don't give up because the designer is making a beautiful design when i came to jesus i left all my bad habits my bad friends and i came to jesus i was holding his hand sir i wanted to pray more i wanted to seek his face but suddenly i got pneumonia chunks of blood would come out when i cough i was so shocked why lord what is this pain i did not know all this that i am in the hands of the designer i only thought i'm going to die but then after 10 days they took sent me out of hospital thank god i was discharged from the hospital and when i came out there was a big mirror in the satya hospital commonly a big mirror even the hospital is closed but god has still kept me alive amen and when i looked into that mirror i was shocked because i saw myself so slim 72 kg became 59 kg i lost 13 kg in 10 days you know what pneumonia god was designing me in order to make me fit for his use why i'm trying to tell you is if you are going through pain if you are going through struggles if you are going through sickness don't leave the hands of god because my god is a designer he is a creative god he is creating something new in your life i started to fast because of this i started to pray more and god has used me mightily today i do not know where you are my dear friend all i want you to tell you when your designing is over you will realize all the poking was for my good all the pain was for my good and the design is now complete in verse 23 after spitting in his eyes jesus touched him and you know what his eyes opened out that's the miracle a little spit a little insult somebody will laugh at you don't give up because my jesus is doing a design he's designing you my dear friend don't give up amazing grace has stepped into your house amazing grace has stepped into your life amazing grace has picked you up when you were in sin he comes into your life not for you to sit eat drink and enjoy the pleasures of life but to take you beyond every hurdle beyond the hurdle of sin beyond the hurdle of habits beyond the hurdle of your weaknesses he wants to take you out what you need to do is hold his hands and number 3 a little bit of insult a little bit of poking a little bit of pain don't give up because my jesus has come to create you into a beautiful person he will do a miracle in your life he will do a creative miracle in the end you will realize all the poking was for my good all the pain was for my good and the design is now complete